Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're going to cover user registration inside our secure contact form application. So in order to allow a user to register, we're going to need to create the registration form. And this registration form is going to be based around the properties that are available on our member. We're going to need to capture the username, the email, and then a way of encoding the password that they provide, which will be in plain text into an encrypted format. In our case, a bcrypt encrypted password. We're never actually going to store the user's plain text password. We'll just store the encrypted version and every subsequent time that the user comes to log back in, they will type in their plain text password. And as part of the login process, that password will be encrypted and checked against the encrypted password that we've got stored in the database. As long as those two match, then the user's allowed in. Okay, so I got picked up on a while back by somebody who said that I never use the generators. And that's quite true. But for the purposes of demonstration, let's go ahead and actually use them. So we can say PHP, Bing console, doctrine, generate. And then we can see all these generators that are available. We've already generated an entity. In this case, I'm going to generate a form. And the form that I want to generate this for is for the app bundle member. So you can see it's created us a form member type. So if we look under form, member type. I'm going to drag it and pop it straight into the form type directory, which is where I prefer to keep my forms and then just update the namespace accordingly. Now I don't really like the formatting that it gives us. And also this password field is wrong. And then somewhat unusually, some of the better practices aren't really adhered to. So I'm going to update this to be a member class as such. I'm going to use a newer array syntax and I'm also going to declare that exception. And it looks like I've not actually got my use statement for that member either. Now, as we covered in the contact form type in the previous series, there's various available form field types that we can use, such as the email, text area type, submit type, and so on. And they will help when rendering out our content in our Twig templates. So thinking about this, our username is probably going to be a text type. Make sure that you use the form extension core type as opposed to the doctrine debal types. If you're using PHP Storm, that is. I'm not entirely sure what other editors will give you in terms of auto completion there. This time we're going to use an email type. And then password in this case is a bit misleading because we don't want to store that plain text value that's going to be submitted in any way. So what we need to do is jump back into our member. And instead of just having the password, we also want to add in a new private field or a new private property of plain password. Now we don't need any annotations because we're not going to be storing this information off to the database. We just need this to be available as a property on our member entity. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit and under set password, get password. I'm going to do command then and do a generate getters and setters for plain password. And now under member type, I can use the plain password. Now what we want here is to have the user enter their password and then the password again to make sure that they've got the password correct. So we're going to have a repeated type and then we need to tell the form component what type of field to repeat. So I'm going to say the type to repeat is the password type. And again, that's just going to help render out some inputs with the type of password set on them, which just means the output will be hidden effectively in the front end. So I'm going to say the first options, I'm going to pass through a label here. And we'll just say that label is going to be password. And then the second options, in other words, the second field will just have a slightly different label of repeat password. Now, we'll also want a submit button on here. So I'll say add a button called register of type submit type. Now to make use of this member type form, we're going to need to declare a new controller, specifically a new controller action for the registration path slash register. So let's go ahead and create a new controller, which we'll call the registration controller. And it's just the same basic setup. We're in the namespace of app bundle controller. We have the class of registration controller, which extends Symphony's framework bundle controller. We're going to have a public function called register action. And there's a slight peculiarity around this, as we'll see as we go through. But to begin with, we'll just return this render registration slash register.html.twig, which we don't yet have. And we'll want to pass in that form. So I'm going to go into views create myself a directory called registration and then register.html.twig. We're going to start off by extends the base. And then again in the block body, we're just going to have a form, which we'll just call the registration form. 
that needs to be the key that we're passing through. So knowing that, on the registration controller, we're passing a key. And that's going to be some form, which we'll need to create the view for. So let's go ahead and create that form. We'll say this, create form, the member type. And rather than leaving this null, we'll pass in a member here, which we don't yet have. So let's just new up an instance of our member. Now you can either do it like that, or because it's simply a new member, we could just pop it in line like that as well. It doesn't really matter. It's entirely your decision. You'll see both of those formats. So just wanted to highlight that that is an available option. And then we might want to pass in some additional arguments or options. And so we'll just need to set this one back up as a member. Okay, all good. Got our form. So we should be able to now, if we make sure that we've named this route of slash register with the name of registration. Let's try and hit that. Okay, my mistake. I need to wrap this in double parens. And there we go, that's our registration form.